So, I'm about to get married. It's my biggest day yet. And my mother-in-law is the one who's being a bridezilla. She's saying that I can't have my natural hair color, which is red, because it matches her hair color, which isn't even natural. She dyed it red. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning because this story is crazy. Future husband and I met, got engaged within six months. We promptly moved across the country for my career, 1,500 miles away from both our families. This flipped a just-no switch in my future mother-in-law, who I previously had an amicable relationship with. Although, her 30-year-old son was in the military for 10 years, hasn't lived in the same state as her since he was 18. She always had a dream of him moving back home and raising her grandchildren nearby. She's now taking it out on both of us for permanently relocating just so far away. So, on to the story. Future Just No Mother-in-Law texted me this weekend asking what I planned on doing to my hair for our upcoming fall 2019 wedding. I sent her back a few hairstyle photos that I saved from Pinterest as inspiration. Conversation went downhill from there. Just No Mother-in-Law says... No, I meant the color. What are you going to do about the color of your hair? Oh, nothing. This is my natural color, and I've never altered it chemically. If I ever desire to do so, it certainly won't be right before the most photographed day of my life. Ugh, don't you think people will think it's weird if you have the same hair color as your dear husband's mother? I just don't want you to have to explain it to your family that we match. Oh, well, I don't think anyone's thinking that. My whole family has natural red hair, and it's just a coincidence that you have yours dyed a color in the same color family. It's no worries at all. Just no mother-in-law doesn't answer for two days, and then she says this. I'm still upset you're not listening to me about your hair color. I really don't want anyone judging us for matching. Please reconsider. That's when I say sorry, and she says, It makes me uncomfortable that you'd be willing to keep the same color as me when you're marrying my son. Um, I'm sorry about that, but I don't think it's anyone's radar that we match. I wouldn't overthink it. Then this is when she drops this jewel. It is because my sister already said it would be hard to tell you, and I a part in a family wedding photo. I just don't want to put dear husband in an uncomfortable position. Well guys, I'm at a loss of how to answer her. Is she really implying her son is somehow going to be sexually attracted to his own mother because we have the same hair color? I'm keeping dear husband out of it because he's stressed enough from the government shutdown furlough situation he's in. Any advice is much appreciated. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. I hope you're having a great day. If you're not subscribed to the channel, take a second right now and click that button. Just so you know, there's three complete updates for this story, so we're going to jump into update number one. First of all, holy crap. I did not expect 6,000 people to read the post, nor did I expect 1,000 comments, so I apologize for a lack of background. I read every single comment and replied to a few, and I seriously appreciate you all. I can't explain how comforting it is to vent to the internet strangers for support. A few comments I saw frequently that I want to address before I post the conversation with mother-in-law. Number one. Mother-in-law has dyed her hair red for the past few years, long before I was in the picture. I also completely forgot about this until reading some of the comments yesterday, but she told me that she had always been obsessed with redheads. She said that she wanted red-haired children because she had an actual dream of having them. Sadly, my 75% Italian fiancé did not turn out that way. Number two. Still new here and don't want to break rules? How do nicknames work? A few of you suggested some, but I'm supposed to pick one and start referring to her instead of just no mother-in-law. Number three. Future dear husband is furloughed and without pay and has been since December. He's borderline depressed and sees a therapist once a week in person and talks to one on the phone daily. If this was on any other point in our relationship, I'd be sharing this with him. 
For now, I'll be handling it and her alone, and I'll update when he's back on his feet. Number 4. Thank you for everyone for sending me the white dress warnings. I genuinely had no idea this was a thing actual people did. It's not on my radar, and I've asked her other son to send me updates on her dress choice when the dates get closer. Number 5. I should have mentioned this. Dear husband and mother-in-law, they're not close. It's by his choice. I believe they refer to their as a little contact. If you ask dear husband, they're not close. But if you ask her or any other of her family, they say that they're super close and tight-knit loving family. Well, when I met his family, he warned me not to try to have a close relationship with mother-in-law because she was, quote, crazy. Coming from my own crazy family... I just brushed it off and decided to try to have a special bond with her. Brother-in-law and father-in-law also gave me the same warning. Do not befriend her. Obviously now, I regret not listening to the three of them, but here we are, deep in her antics, and all I can do is tell myself I tried and that I did everything I could done to have the mother-daughter bond I was trying to have. And number six... Due to the crazy demands of her and my own family, <laughs> stories for another day, we're actually having a tiny courthouse ceremony for just the two of us to be legally married. And the reception is the wedding she's referring to. She's still not over not being there for her son's actual wedding, but it had to be done. Now for the continued conversation. Just no mother-in-law says... It's because my sister already said it would be hard to tell you, and I apart in a family wedding photo. I just don't want to put dear husband in an uncomfortable position. Then she says, I want you to have all the attention you deserve on your big day. I'm looking out for you and don't want anyone feeling uncomfortable that the mother of the groom and bride look alike. That's when I say, um, hi, mother-in-law. Sorry for the delayed responses. I was picking up extra hours at the hospital, trying to make up for the current dip in our income. I'm confident our hair color won't be on anyone's mind during the reception. I'm proud to come from a family of all redheads, and I think it's great you blend in well with us well. What did your sister say specifically about us matching? If you send me her number, I'd love to speak to her to clear things up if you'd like. Then she says, You do not need to talk with her because other family members agreed it's awkward for everyone that we match. Um, hair color is such a small aspect of matching someone. Our outfits will be completely different, and I don't think it's awkward for anyone. I'm also happy to speak with these other family members if they have concerns. Just no mother-in-law replies with, I have had this hair color since I survived chemo in 2013. I'm proud to have my red hair because there was a point in my life where I didn't know if I was going to be alive for my son's wedding, let alone have the hair for it. Responding again before I had the chance to reply, she says, You weren't there for him during his deployments like we were. You don't understand how big this day is for us all now that he's home, safe. You're marrying his family, not him. Just know, mother-in-law, responding for the third time. I will not be told I cannot have red hair at my son's wedding. That's when I say, um, I don't recall ever saying you shouldn't have red hair at our wedding. Did someone else give you that idea that I want you to dye your hair? I'd love to help you pick out the perfect dress to complement your red survivor hair that you're so proud of. I know we both look good in green and blue. It was implied that one of us has to dye it, but since you're oh, just not budging, you think it should be me. I worked so hard for my hair. It's not fair. You can't do this to me. I say, um, the more redheads, the merrier in my opinion. Please don't let anyone tell you that you should change your hair color and I'll follow the same advice. Us redheads will stick together and probably outnumber the non-redheads at the family table. Dear husband and I certainly aren't worried, so I would not spend another minute of your time worrying either. That's when just no mother-in-law says this. Well, that's easy for you to say when you live far away and choose not to spend time with me or my family anymore. 
but I have to be here and answer to everyone that's upset we have the same hair color. You don't understand. Surviving cancer and being proud of it and your son. The only logical reply here is, what the duck are you talking about? I don't even know what the argument's about anymore, but she's still very adamant that she's the center of attention, not putting down any cancer survivors that fought hard for their life. But according to Dear Husband, she had a positive biopsy in her breast they found very, very early stage cancer, which was treated with a one round of chemo radiation. Apparently, she sent out a last will and testament and told everyone she had minimal time left to live, after being told by her medical team that they were almost positive she would have a full recovery, with no adverse effects. This also reminded me of her suggestion to have a pink theme to honor her, and have wedding favors with pink ribbons on them in her honor. Yes, I'm taking the killer with kindness route, because I don't want screenshots of nasty messages sent around like she's done to dear husband in the past. It's clear now that everyone was correct about her playing the victim, and this is 100% about her needing to be the center of attention. I'm still at a loss for words for a reply, but at least I have an entertaining story for dear husband and you all. Thanks in advance for any advice on where I should lead this conversation, or just general feedback. I appreciate you all. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. So it turns out the second update was deleted, and you're going to flip out when you figure out why. It's told in the third update, so let's jump directly in it. Hey guys, you may remember me from the post about how my crazy mother-in-law wanted me to dye my naturally red hair for my wedding, so people would not confuse us at the wedding. First off, an update on why I deleted my third post. Apparently, my story made the news here in the United Kingdom, and I didn't want someone I knew to find out. I don't give a duck now if anyone finds out. I'm so beyond mad that I hope someone finds out so everyone we know can shame that chick. So here I am again, and this time I'm here to stay. On to the live update of what's going on. So, this jerk conceded to the fact that she was not going to get her way, especially after I mentioned to her that several other of our family members also have red hair. I asked her if she also expected them to dye their hair as well, and this then she got quiet. She said she'd figure something out. I thought that this is a bullcrap situation and it's over. But naturally, this just-no-mother-in-law stepped up her game. This chick dyed her hair bright pink. It looks really bad on her, but she sure as crap stands out now. I'm so irritated. She also bought a super shiny pink dress to match her new hair color. She rubbed it in how, quote, Nobody will confuse us now. Hee <laughs> hee. Well, I'm so torn. I don't know how to handle this situation. I mean, technically, I guess I did not have to dye my hair, but she one-upped me and indeed did figure out a way to make herself stand out. The maliciousness of this act is what is making me the most mad. The why she did it? Any advice would be tremendously helpful as to how to handle this. Also, if anyone has a nickname for this chick, I'd appreciate it very much. So, one of the commenters doesn't think her dyeing her hair pink is the end of the world. Here's why. I think OP would not have cared about being one-upped by awful pink hair and a dress at their own wedding because it truly highlights how insane her mother-in-law is for all to see. It really seems like aside from getting the antics to stop, she was only really interested in getting her husband to see how crazy his mother was and being on the same page with him on what to do about it. So guys, I have to agree with that. The next story we're going to look at is titled, Mother-in-law keeps invading OP's home. Don't forget, if you have a similar situation story you want to share, just drop it in the comment section and we'll talk about it and read it. Alright, let's get into the next story now. I'm female 19, and I'm married to a total mama's boy. We have a baby together, our little one's three months old, and he's the cutest. We've been married for a year now, 
We eloped after seven months together because I was pregnant. What I did not know is that his mother forced him to elope with me because she did not want a fatherless grandchild. He's generally a very good guy, so we went to counseling and worked through it. Mother-in-law and father-in-law bought us our home as a gift, which I am very grateful for. What I'm not grateful for is my mother-in-law constantly in our house. She has a spare key and I frequently come home to furniture being rearranged. Mills that I cooked thrown out of my immodest clothing missing. Also, all my red lipstick and nail polishes are gone too. My husband tried to make me let it go, but I told him very clearly that her key needed to be taken ASAP. She was only allowed over if he was there. He agreed and he took her key. She phone called me and called me an evil jerk for that. Well, a few days ago, I received a call from my husband while he was at work. Mother-in-law was on her way and I was to let her in with no drama. I told him, under no circumstances would she be allowed in. I calmly reminded him of our boundaries and said he was welcome to call her and tell her to come later when he was home. When mother-in-law pulled up outside, I called her and I said very kindly that I was sick. Yeah, a lie. And that I did not have the energy to host someone at the moment and did not want to risk getting her sick. She tried to persist, but I kind of snapped and said she could go back home because she wasn't being let in unless my husband was here. The woman has arthritis and rain on, so thought, quote, We have cold weather right now. Surely this woman knows her own limits and will eventually get back to her car and leave. Oh boy, I was very, very wrong. She stayed, banging on the door for an hour. Father-in-law had to come get her because her hands became too painful for her to drive. My husband and in-laws were furious with me, and he said that I was acting like a child and being immature. I received abusive phone calls from his sister, and my parents and friends are telling me I was wrong to lock her out because of her health issues. The only person who seems to agree with what I did is my husband's younger brother. I would like some advice on how to move forward with settling some effective and reasonable boundaries. With mother-in-law, of course, that don't have everyone and their mama calling me childish and evil. Please don't ask me to get divorced or go no contact. Thank you. What's up, guys? Here's your update one week later. I'm still staying with my great aunt and my husband now knows I want a divorce. I didn't attend the meeting to get my name on the title of the house because my lawyer said that if I want a clean break, I should not get even more entangled with him. My lawyer also said that I will most likely get full custody as I have multiple pieces of evidence of me being my baby's primary and sometimes sole caretaker. When I did not turn up for the meeting, he called me and that's when I told him that I wanted a divorce. Oh boy, he freaked the duck out. He started begging me not to leave him, and he came to my great aunt's house to try to convince me to get back with him. He swore that he'd look for another job. He works for his parents, and he'd set boundaries with mother-in-law. He even promised to return to the house to his parents and look for a place for us to rent. Having some time away from him really put things into perspective for me. He's lovely sometimes, but when it comes to his parents, he's the worst person I've ever met. Surprisingly, mother-in-law called me after my husband left, and she asked to meet me. I told her I'd only meet in public, so we met at a cafe later that day, and she apologized. She said that she would not be able to live with being the cause of our divorce and the destruction of our home. She's extremely Christian, by the way, so I'm suspecting this is a religious thing, and she doesn't want to go to hell or something. So, my husband gave her back her spare key when I refused to let her in. She gave me the key during our meeting and said she'd never come over without permission. She asked me just to consider counseling with her son, and she also asked me to arrange a new appointment with a house lawyer to get my name on the title. I don't trust her at all. I think she's doing this so people don't talk badly about her, but her advice all seems to be things that would be in my best interest. I did, however, agree to counseling, 
Our first session is next week, and my husband seems proactive and excited for it. He came over again yesterday to see our son, and he brought me flowers and brownies, and he said he really missed me at home. Do you guys think I'm doing the right thing here, and do you all have any suggestions? Just to pull y'all's mind at ease, my parents are now on my side, and my dad's paying for my lawyer. Mother-in-law is not paying for counseling, my husband is. I'm in college doing an English literature degree with a minor in psychology. I'm hoping to go to law school. I'm not totally financially reliant on my husband. I do have money saved from when I used to work and trust funds from my parents. So here's what one of the comments says. What the heck else was anyone supposed to tell her? Good luck, you'll need it. I was glad to see she had realized she needed to get out before she was suddenly 25 years into a marriage with this guy and mom. Sadly, it appears she immediately fell for the love bombing. I'm off the opinion that, like job salaries, if you have to leave before they offer to change, keep walking and find someone who values from the start. So that's a good little bit of information. Let me know if you agree with it or not. Drop your comments down below. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, just go ahead and click that subscribe button. There's also two more channels you can find in the links below. I hope you have an amazing day. That's all the content. I'll see you in the next one.